Hey folks, Mr. Dell here. I am going to go over solving equations, right? So simplifying an equation and then isolating your variable to determine the value of that variable. So solving equations, okay? This is, I'm going to use some examples, some problems from CPM. And this is course three. And this is section 3.2. 2.2, okay, number 387. So as you see, um, I've got four equations to solve, and the directions say simplify each of the following equations and solve for the variable. Show all work and check your solutions if possible. So we'll go over that idea as well, like how do you check your solution? So when we're solving an equation, remember what I'm looking for is I'm looking for, and I tend to put my uh, a line down where the equal sign is, so I Realize I've got two sides of the equation. Because what I'm looking for is I'm looking for a number that I can I can put into this variable x. Do the math, and I get the same thing on both sides, right? So, for example, if my number was 1, right, I'd say 3 times 1 minus 7 plus 9 minus 2 times 1. Does that all equal 1 plus 3, right? If If 1 was the answer, then when I do the math here, it would be the same here right? That's what I'm looking for. What number makes these equations true? So we could sit there and play guess and check until we find a number that works, or we can go down the process of solving this equation. So in this case, I'm going to simplify first. When I simplify this side of the equation, I have to combine like terms. So I have a 3x and a, remember, minus or negative 2x. 3x and negative 2x is x, okay? And then a the sign in front of the number matters. So that's a minus 7 or negative 7 and a positive 9. Those combine negative 7 plus 9 become positive 2. So I have x plus 2 is equal to x plus 2. Now, what's interesting with this one is, again, I was looking for a number that makes this equation true, right? Well, right here, I see I have the exact same expression on both sides. So no matter what I put in here, I'm going to get... A true statement, right? If I do put a 1 in, 1 plus 2 is 3. 1 plus 2 is 3. That works. 1 would make this true. 10 would make it true. 10 plus 2 is 12. 10 plus 2 is 12. 10 would make it true. Negative values would make it true. Fractions, anything, anything I put into x is going to make this true. So this is one of those situations where actually this equation, x, is, and we would say, all numbers. So the, the value here is x is all numbers, or there's an infinite number of solutions. You can also say that. So x is all numbers, or there's an infinite number of solutions. That's A. B, let's look at B. So B, I'm going to go through the process again. So B, again, I want to find out what is M. What value of M makes this equation true? So first thing to do. And I'll, I'll, let me write the steps, the, 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 the quick steps. The steps for solving, the first thing is always simplify. That's the very first thing. You simplify both sides of the equation, right? When I say both sides, it's of the equation. That's why I put the line down for the equal sign. I have this side of the equation, this side. I'm trying to keep them balanced and simplify. So I'm going to first simplify. Then my next step, um, here I was done after I simplified because I had the same thing and I noticed that, so I knew the answer was X is all numbers. But sometimes I have a second step. My second step is to isolate the variable term, right? The term with the variable. Uh, sometimes it's a, a variable X, sometimes a variable M, but the term with the variable. So you want to get it alone. Okay. And then the third, well, let's, let's, let's do one thing at a time and then I'll write the third step. So let's, let's do the simplify first. So simplify. So I have a negative 2m and a positive 1m, right? When you don't see a number in front of a variable, there's always a 1. The coefficient is 1. So negative 2, positive 1 makes it a negative 1m. And then I have a plus 8, plus 1, so that becomes plus 9 equals 0. Okay. So I keep writing what I have over here. That's simplified. Now I've got that. So now I isolate the variable term. That means get the variable term by itself. My variable term is this negative 1m. So I got to get it by itself. So I got, I got to do the opposite operations 
to get it by itself. So this is right now it's got the plus nine is sitting here. So I'm going to get rid of that to get rid of it. I do the opposite. I subtract nine or do a negative nine that makes it go away. And it's a, it's an equation. So you got to keep things balanced. So what I do to one side, I always do the other side. So I also subtract nine. So now what I have left over here is this negative one M is equal to zero and negative nine is negative nine. So now we look, we're saying negative one times some value is equal to negative nine. So you might already know what that value is. You might say, oh, I see that negative one times nine is negative nine. So you see that M is equal to nine. You might already see that M is positive nine because negative one times nine is negative nine. That's what's going to make this true. That's what we're looking for. What value makes it true? But if you don't see that, the third step in solving the equation is always to divide by the coefficient. Okay, so the coefficient, remember, is that number in front of the variable. And in this case, my coefficient's a negative one. So if I divide by negative one, negative one divided by negative one gives me that m all by itself, one m. But I do what to do to one side, I do to the other, and negative nine divided by negative one is positive nine. So that's why the answer there is positive nine. Okay, so those are my three steps of solving every equation. If I remember those, that helps me process this. So let's get go again. Let's do C. I do my divider, so I see the two sides of my equation. My first step is simplify both sides. Well, this side is already simplified. It's just a two. I'll leave it, just a two. This side, I'm going to have to combine some like terms. I have an x, or we'd say a 1x, and then I have a negative 2x, right? Include the sign. So negative 2, positive 1, makes it a negative 1x, and then I still have this plus 6. Okay, next thing, isolate the variable term. So I got to get them a variable term all alone. So I'm going to get rid of this plus 6 by subtracting 6, or a negative 6. That makes that go away. So negative 6, and I do to one side, I do to the other side of the equation, right? You notice I'm doing the same thing on both sides. So positive 2, negative 6 makes it a negative 4 is equal to negative 1x. And again, I'm, very, I'm at a similar situation that I had here. Negative 1 times something is negative 4. So x has to equal 4. Because negative 1 times 4 is x. Or if you needed to, you divide both sides by the coefficient. That becomes a 1, and that's why my single x is. And negative 4 divided by negative 1 is positive 4. So once again, x equals 4. Last one here. So now I've got, now I have uh, 5 tenths p is equal to p plus 5. So one more time, simplify both sides. I don't need to. There's nothing to combine on this side, nothing to combine on this side. So we, we skip over to number 2, isolate the variable term. But now I've got variable terms on both sides. So I, I want to get them only on one side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to eliminate the P from here. So they're all my, all my P term is over here. So I'm going to subtract P, right? The opposite of positive P is negative P. So that goes away from one side and do the same thing over here. And what we're doing is we're subtracting one P. So it's 0.5 P minus 1p, or 0.5p and a negative 1p makes it a negative 0.5p, or negative um, 5 tenths p, is equal to, over here, we still have that positive 5. So last step, divide by the coefficient. So I'm going to divide both sides by a negative 0.5. And so my p value is what? Well, the, the question is, how many times does 5 tenths go into 5. Well, it goes into there 10 times. Right? And I have a positive to buy a negative, so it's a negative 10. So the answer is P is equal to negative 10. Okay? And there we go. Oh, I forgot, forgot something. Sorry, I should have been checking my solution along the way. So let me just show you how to check it. I'm going to show you on one of them, and then that'll, then you'll just be able to, from there, uh, check the other ones as well. So checking solution, let's check on C. My original equation was 2 is equal to x plus 6 minus 2x, right? And so here's how you check it. Checking it is to determine whether my answer is right by putting it back into the original equation. So 
if I put a four back into the original equation, I would say four plus six minus two times four. And on this side, I want to make sure it equals a two. That's what I should get, right? So when we do the order of operations, remember we multiply first. So this is four plus six minus eight, then add subtract straight across. So 10 minus eight, which is two. So I get a two on this side and on this side, I always had a two and they are equal. So it checks out, right? So I wanted to make sure when I plug in my number, my, the value I got in the original equation, it works. So you do the same thing with negative 10 here. You'd plug it into the P here, plug it into the P here, make sure you get the same thing on both sides. And then the nine, plug it into the both M's, do the math, make sure you get a zero as you have on that side. All right. That's how you check your solution. Okay. I hope that helps.